Uh, one quick comment. First of all, I'm, I'm always fascinated by this focus, um, almost obsession with the race part of this, when actually white women have benefited far more from affirmative action than people of color. Secondly, I mean, we can, we can show that. Secondly, where, with, with every um, opinion poll that it uses the term preferences where it gets the negative response, there are also polls that use the term affirmative action or other terminology, and you get a different response. So, and, and, and when I was with Americans for a Fair Chance, we documented that as well. Lastly, yes, I, I think discussion, particularly on race, is an issue, is an issue, and we need to have it because of the demographics. If we look, you know, you know the, the statistics, like 20, was it 42? Uh, the majority of Americans will be of color. It's time to have that discussion. But I'm more concerned not only about having that discussion, but talking about what we do to integrate and make sure that everyone can contribute in terms of the workplace. And that means getting serious, and I agree, about elementary and secondary education. We really got, have to talk about those priorities because that's the majority of the future. And so we really need to have those discussions about race. We've got five more minutes. Next question. I have a two-parter. My name is Eric Jaffe. I'm an attorney here in DC. Uh, I'll make them quick. Uh, uh, Ms. Chavez has already spoken to, about her views about this, but I wonder why it wouldn't make more sense to substitute economic disadvantage, given that I've heard a number of speakers, including President Obama, as well as both speakers to, uh, up here, Professor Shaw and Ms. Wilshire, mention that part of the rationale for affirmative action, by which I mean some thumb on the scale, however we want to characterize it, some thumb on the scale. Part of the rationale for that is to make up for structural deficiencies, uh, historical deficiencies, whatever, going to worse schools, having a worse undergraduate, you know, uh, elementary and secondary education. If that's the case, and there are indeed structural deficiencies that disadvantage people, why wouldn't that be reflected in their economic status, and hence we should shift to economics as the basis for preferences, or, or, or benefits, or whatever you want to call it, affirmative action, and stay away from race, particularly given that economics has the benefit of being self-correcting. If it works, they will no longer be poor, and we can move on to the next group that is structurally disadvantaged. The second part of my question is, to the extent that the justification for affirmative action is diversity for its own sake, i.e. getting people having more diverse experience with folks of different races, which of course wouldn't necessarily be solved by the economic position, why doesn't that just collapse the available candidate pool of minorities into the upper level schools, taking law school as an example. If you disproportionately bring in candidates of, of minority backgrounds into the top schools, why doesn't that just div reduce diversity in the lower tier schools and hence harm uh, just as many people as it helps? That's all. Let me uh, try to address the second question first. Uh, I mean, there's too much in here to really do it justice. Mm -hmm. Uh, there have been arguments made, I think perhaps, um, uh, Linda, you've made some of them about cascading and uh, affirmative action, basically uh, uh, the end of affirmative action would put students where they belong, uh, uh, students uh, who can't compete at the top schools, et cetera. We could have a long discussion about that. I, I, obviously, I don't agree. Um, uh, but uh, the short answer to your second question, I think, is that there are more than enough uh, uh, students of color. Uh, to fill the schools that are not highly competitive, uh, uh, even with students uh, who uh, have the benefit of race conscious admissions at the selective institutions. I mean, I'm, I don't think that, that it follows uh, that um, uh, there aren't students at the less competitive institutions. Now, there's a lot more that we could talk about in that discussion, but we just simply don't have time. Uh, but I'd be glad to do it sometime and figure out how to do it. Uh, let me say something with respect to your first question. Uh, um, uh, you know, maybe this is an area where uh, the common ground piece um, uh, can be further explored. I mean, I have to say in all honesty that uh, I've been somewhat um, intrigued by the fact that uh, people who consider themselves to be conservative have made these arguments because they haven't been knocking down the doors uh, to uh, address um, economic inequality uh, except in the context of this argument. That's where the issue comes up. But let me take it at good faith, uh, you know, face value. Um, uh, one of the reasons why I, as I would still say, uh, and I agree that we should pursue economic status, um, affirmative action, or whatever you want to call it, diversity, 
but one of the reasons why it's not a complete substitute is because the majority of poor people in this country are still white in absolute numbers. If you have uh, class conscious, race blind policies, there's no guarantee you're going to reach significant numbers of people of color. We've seen that at UCLA when they tried to go that way. Uh, so that, that's apparent, that's evident. Even though black and brown people tend to be disproportionately poor, they're not the majority of poor people in this country, uh, at least not at this moment. Uh, but I do support uh, class conscious policies um, uh, and trying to do something about class inequality. Uh, the, the, the piece of this that I just want to uh, signal or flag very quickly, uh, when you talk about an honest discussion and it, 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 it's raised in your uh, point about diversity, uh, diversity of course came from Baki, uh, Powell's opinion. Uh, and Baki for African Americans at the time was thought to be a loss. Uh, it was uh, the palatable substitute uh, for um, a remedial uh, uh, action. Uh, that address the racial discrimination in this country. And nobody wants to talk about that honestly anymore. Um, so there are very complex issues given the way even the African American community has changed demographically that play out uh, in the way affirmative action is uh, implemented now. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that uh, it's a discussion that um, I would welcome having with you or the Federal Society and there's a, a lot more to say about it. George. I'm very sorry to have to cut you off. It's 5.15, and I've been told we have to leave at 5.15. So thank you very much, and let's give a hand to the panel. Good to see you. Thank you.